Hey guys, this is Mori from Agony Gaming and this is my PvE Phantasm build. There are two variations of this build. The version that I'm currently playing is the 2020-025-5 build. If you're doing content that is not top end fractals or the harder dungeons and you can spend more than 50% of time in melee range, you may prefer the extra precision and buff to sword cooldowns with a 10 30 0, 25, 5 build, which is better for easier content such as COF speedrun. Here's a breakdown of my talent trees. First, Domination. For my 10 point trait, I use Empowered Illusions. The 15% damage boost stacks with the trait Phantasm Strength, giving you a total of 30% damage boost to your Phantasms. You can also swap this talent with Mental Torment for 20% bonus damage to your Mind Rack if you like using Shatters more often. The 15 point talent is not core to this build, but it makes it so your Diversion Shatters on Trash Pulls also add Vuln stacks, which is nice. The 20 point trait you'll want to use is Greatsword Training, which will give you a 20% reduction to your Greatsword cooldowns. On to dueling. The 5 point talent Critical Infusion is awesome. It makes it so you can dodge way more, which will help your survivability as a glass cannon DPS with very high crit chance. For the 10 point trait, I always take Phantasmal Fury, which makes it so my Phantasms crit nearly every time they do an attack. This is a huge DPS boost. The 15 point talent's Sharper Images boosts your personal DPS and helps keep bleed stacks on bosses at max. The 20 point trait I always use is Desperate Decoy. I personally like having this trait for creating clones on demand for healing and shattering. If you dodge backwards, it will also create a clone in, to use in front of you as a meat shield for various attacks, meaning they will absorb whatever projectile attack would normally hit you. Now for the Inspiration Tree. The 5 point talent ends up being better for PvP than PvE, but when your Phantasms or clones get hit by a mob, they will reflect some of that damage back at it. Talents you can slot here for your 10 point trait, whether it be the increased Phantasm health pools, feedback on resing, or Vigor on shatters. I personally have been using the reduced cooldowns on Glamour utilities since those abilities are crucial in a lot of endgame dungeons. 15 points grants you Phantasmal healing, which gives your Phantasms the ability to cast regeneration to nearby allies. This really isn't a great talent, especially since we don't have healing power with this build, but any regen for your group is better than no regen. With a great sword sword focus loadout, most of your regen will be given to melee. For 20 points, you'll want to use Warden's Feedback. This trait makes it so your focus skills reflect projectiles and reduces the cooldown by 20%. This talent makes it so you can use your Phantasmal Warden a lot more and your Curtain to reflect projectiles. This talent is super useful for fractals, but it's also useful for regular dungeons when you're chain pulling trash mobs into walls to AoE. The 25 point trait is Phantasmal Strength, which makes your Phantasms do 15% more damage. I like the boost in damage to my Phantasms versus the 3% damage per active illusion from the next trait tree, especially in speedruns or fractals where you're not sure if you'll always have 3 illusions up. Finally, 5 points into illusions. With illusionist celerity, my Phantasm recharge time is as low as it possibly can be. If you've been playing a Mesmer for a while, you've probably already figured out that utilities are very situational. Often you'll be swapping utilities throughout a dungeon and will not have a set loadout. My most commonly used utility skills are 1 Stun Breaker, usually Blink, and Null Field and Feedback. The reason why I use Blink as my Stun Breaker is that it's also very useful for quickly moving across and escaping red rings, trap mechanics, or any boss mechanics that would normally kill me. I prefer this over decoy and mirror images since the changes in stealth aggro mechanics does not guarantee escape on decoy, and I like having an ability that instantly relocates myself somewhere safe at any point during a fight. Null field for condition removal and feedback for its reflex is a no-brainer, especially with this build that reduces the recharge rate of your glamour skills. Null field is more reliable than arcane thievery as a condition removal and can help your entire party as well as strip boons off of foes. Feedback is irreplaceable in a lot of situations, providing a large projectile reflect field as well as a way to grant chaos shields to your party with combo finishers. Some other utilities you may want to use depending on the fight are Decoy, Mirror Images, Mantra of Concentration, Arcane Thievery, Signet of Inspirations for Might Stacking, Portal, or Mimic. Mesmer Elites are fairly straightforward. Even with the recent nerf to Time Warp, it's still one of the best elites in the game and will be what you use most of the time. Mass and Villa's ability can also be useful in PvE situations to skip content. Always use Ether Feast because it's the biggest heal a Mesmer has with a fairly short cast time and low cooldown. Mirror can potentially be useful for some dungeons if you find yourself in a group that has very little reflect. 
For my gear, I use all Berserker's gear with Ruby Orbs to maximize my damage output. You can try to play this spec with Knights or even Soldier's gear if you have problems surviving, but I've been using straight Berserker's gear for everything including 30 plus fractals and have had no problems surviving. For sigils, I would suggest either using Bloodlust or Strength on your Greatsword. On my Sword and Focus, I use Force and Battle. If you're looking to play more often in melee, you may want to look into slotting a sigil of energy into your greatsword, which would give you a guaranteed dodge on weapon swap to help escape melee range without dying. Now I'll leave you with some footage of me playing my Mesmer. Take note that I have no set rotation. Part of the key to success is knowing when certain abilities on your other weapon sets are available for use, knowing when to get into melee range, as well as knowing when the proper time is to shatter. Most of my damage will come from burst cycles, as well as phantasm attacks. An example of a typical opening burst cycle would be Great Sword number 2, 4, 3 auto attack while running into melee. You'll then want to swap to your melee weapon set, perhaps dodging and blowing a quick mind rack before popping your phantasm warden. After that, you can either stay in the melee range cleaving, dodging and popping your number 3 illusion leap finisher for a combo field, or swapping to your Great Sword and dodging back out of range depending on what is happening during the fight. Also keep in mind that you can create meat shields. If you dodge backwards, it will create a clone directly in front of you, which will absorb whatever attack was going to hit you as long as it was not a cleave or AoE ability. I hope this video guide was somewhat informative to you. If you want to check out more, hit subscribe and watch some of the other profession videos from our guild.